and land increases in value, and especially in Africa, where the population is growing fast and we need to house our people. Uh, I was blessed to invest in a 50-acre farm. Uh, we are growing organic moringa, organic vegetables, and we are helping the youth to come out of the cities, uh, which is a pity, and it's not a good place for the youth or anyone to be. So we have to make uh, eco villages uh, real viable, um, I call it heaven on earth. In fact, that's the name of our farm, home, heaven on earth. So we're striving to have everything we need without depending on money, uh, because we have to break the, the, the cycles of depending on um, uh, just currency. If we have land, if we have uh, food, we have water, we have solar energy, uh, then the land will take care of us. Everything will come to us. Uh, let's give her a round of applause. Uh, speaking of land, our next speaker is uh, the land consultant. He retired from the Ghana Lands Department. He's an expert on how to get your documents processed through the Lands Department. He can also give you tips on how to avoid the pitfall because there are um, there are some unscrupulous people that don't understand the importance of love thy neighbor as thyself. Uh, so we have to understand that we have to have the correct checks and balances. So that's what we do with for the Africans, opportunities in Africa. We bring the experts. So if you follow the guideline, then you'll be safe because we have it and no one can steal it from us because we've done due process. So at this time, I'd like to bring forth our brother, our friend, brother, Asofu Dunkwa. The subject matter life is a very important issue to every human being on earth. You all know we live on the land. Whatever you want to do, you have to be on land. Whether business, whether anything, you are still on the land. So I use this opportunity to welcome all of you and to open your ears attentively and to pick up the pieces as I proceed. Uh, in Ghana, when we talk about land, land came about because of wars, people were conquered, and then their lands were taken over. Now, during these wars, when the lands are conquered by the various ethnic groups and tribes, normally in any society or a community, it takes families to make a community. So in a situation where they are conquest and the lands are conquered, the tribes or the ethnic groups, uh, they give some of the lands to the families who are during the wars. And then they become the owners, or the Alodia owners, depending upon the limitation of their lands. In Ghana, when we talk about land, Land ownership is either by schools, families, kings, and families. And there are some lands which are government lands. The government of Ghana does not own any land. He only owns a land by acquiring through an executive instrument, which is a legal process, where the government or the states find the need that a particular portion of land is required to have a clinic, school, or whatever the government needs or the state needs a particular land. It goes through that process, a publication is made, and then eventually the owners of the land, be it the families or the schools or the skins, have to be adequately compensated by law as far as our constitution is concerned. So in Ghana, we have family lands, school lands, state lands, as I've explained. The state only can have the land when it acquires a land from a family, an individual, or a school. Now, when you come to consider the ownership of land, 
If you want to acquire a land, that is acquisition of land. There are certain processes you have to go through to make sure that you don't get yourself involved in any court cases or any encumbrances. So first and foremost, you have to be aware as you come over here, you'll be interested in doing uh, businesses, farming, and what have you. But at any time, before you take any step, you must get a plan, a map of the area in question, where you want to develop either for real estate, for farming, for industry, and for commercial purposes. After you've got the plan, and then you have to visit the government agency, which is responsible for storage of all transactions on lands. So when you go with your plan, like in Accra region, you go to the lands commission office with your plan, you apply for a research or a search. So they will use your map and superimpose it on their records, which they have kept in the offices. Every area, they have a map covering there. So when you go with your plan, in effect, they will just give you a written report, which will show the history. For instance, if I have acquired a land, I've given it to Mr. A, Mr. A has given it to Mr. B. When you go and make a search with a plan of land, which I wanted to give you, you will come to find out that the report will reveal my name as the original person who acquired it from the Alodia owners. When we say Alodia owners, let's take this room for example. If I have the whole of this room as my land, I'm the Alodia owner of this land. In effect, anybody who is to have a land within the limitation or this room must derive his title from me because I'm the one who's on record to be the owner of this land. And then when I give it out to Mr. A, it will, when you go and show within the limitation, it will reveal Mr. A's name. If Mr. A has given it to Madam B, it will show that the thing went from me to A and then to Madam B, and so forth. So I will humbly advise those of you who want to do investment, any investment start with land. And the land in Ghana, as I already given you the background, are owned by other individuals, families, uh, government, and all this and that. So for instance, if an individual wants to give you land, and then the land is a government land, it may be lying down fallow. You go, there's nobody on the land. But mind you, because it belongs to the state, when you go and acquire that land, and I give you a transfer, when you go and process it, it will be rejected, because I'm not on record as the owner of the land. So you must take note there. And don't forget, in Ghana, by law, land have got their usage. It in effect, if you want to acquire land for a church, you must contact the planning section or the planning agency after you acquire the land. And then it will also reveal to you that that land, you can only use it for a school. In effect, before you get a permit, to develop that land, it must conform with the usage. So you don't just acquire land. When you are acquiring a land, you have a purpose for which you are acquiring the land. And you must make sure that you are in contact with the local or the district or the municipal authority, which is responsible for the planning of the area. And then they will confirm to you as to what you can do with that land. So you may acquire the land. The land belongs to you genuinely that you cannot use it for the purpose which you intend if it does not conform to the planning scheme of the local authority or the district or the municipal authority. And then the next thing is, when you have got a report on a land and you acquire it, you must approach the appropriate land agency, depending upon where you are acquiring the land. That is after documents or legal instruments are given to you between the parties, that is, the vendor and the purchaser. You don't just keep the documents with you. If you keep the documents and you don't send it to the appropriate agency 
to go and register your name on their land. So that at any time, if anybody wants to go and register your land, it will go and find out that your name is already on the land because you have acquired it. There are many instances people go and acquire land. They don't go and process their papers. Others go and see, they go and make a set. They find out that the area is vacant. Although you have a document in your hand, before you want to go and process it, already somebody has registered the name there. And once he registered the name there, it means that's why that you acquired your land area. Because you did not go to process it, you go and find out that uh, your document will be rejected. If you take him to court, he has registered the land. All that you can console yourself with is that the family or whoever gave you the land will decide that I'm going to give you another land. And that one, maybe the original land that you have, it was at a very prime area. But this time, because the land has been depleted, you'll be taken to some valley or some place which you will not like it. <laughs> so please, you must take note. And please, if you want to do any business, first get somebody who is an expert on land. I am one of the experts. Unfortunately, I should have brought some of the books here which can guide you. Now, once I was here, I, was, I went out to talk to the publishers and lend them. So I'm hoping that by the next time that you come, the books will be available. Uh, as we leave this place, I'll give my numbers to everybody. And then if you want to do any business, whether you want to do farming, whether you want to do whatever you want to do, don't forget you are going to start with land. So it's appropriate that you, con you consult somebody who is an expert on that. And that will be a gateway for you to go ahead. And then when you get the land, to, you must get people who will manage it for you. You must get people who will value it for you. Ghana, people sell land just by calling, just any amount to you because you are in need. And then if you have money, you just go and pay. I will also advise that any time that you want to acquire it, you must also make sure that the value is not that because you are in need, but at least you are paying for the correct value. So I will end here maybe when it gets to question time. Okay, I'm going to ask Mr. Ghana to He knows land inside and out. So with him, you can never go wrong. Um, we have a few publications dealing with.